Hello, this is Far Star at Block 22, and uh, I haven't been focusing on finishing Far Star, so uh, didn't have much time to post videos. But I've been working on the achievements uh, part, like integrating with Steam. I had a few hiccups, and I guess this is interesting for other people as well. So I'm gonna go through a little bit what I'm doing, and uh, I will include Steam, Goda, and um, also how I organize stuff in my code. So. Let me start with the Steam side of it. So in Steam, um, your game needs to be on Steam already. So in your dashboard, in your Steam page, you need to go to achievements. And in this page, you can add the different achievements. I just added two for now. And uh, you, you add like a, a key name, what you'll be referring from your code. You can add a title and a description. And uh, what's the icon when it's unlocked or locked. Um, there are a few extra things around stats that I won't cover because this isn't the Steam documentation, uh, but that's the minimum you have. I think the, the thing here to pay attention is that after you add the achievement, you need to click publish. If you don't publish the page, you won't be able to get those achievements. So coming to Goya, you likely want to use one of those two plugins. And there is one that's the Goya Steam API. Uh, it's supposed to be simpler, but as it hasn't received updates for a while, I decided to go with the second one that I think it's the most popular one, that is Go.Steam. There are many different options. So for me, I chose to not compile with stuff. I just feel like it's easier for me to just use whatever they give me. I started with the option with the GD extension. For this one, you install it as a Goda plugin and should work out of the box. But there is some kind of bug on my machine that when I try to get achievement, it just crashed the game. So then I went with the second route where you go to the Steam page and you download um, the editor. So in here, they have different editors. I'm using Godot 3, so I got this one. No, I got this one because I'm using 3.5. And uh, this contains the Steamworks and everything you need. The downside of using that is that they provide a binary for Godot. If you have other modules that you had to compile, you have to compile things yourself again. But yeah, but I just started, it looks exactly like the default Godot editor because it's the same source code. The main difference is that it exposed the Steam client. Um, before you start, there are two things you need to do. One, you need to have Steam running and it needs to be logged in with an account that has access to your game. So in this case, I'm using my developer account and I guess that that will be likely what you're gonna do. So just keep in mind, you need to have the client working. Another thing you need to do is you, you need to set the app ID for your test. This is done by creating a file. This is Steam app ID and just put your, your ID in there. You can get the ID from your game page, either the partner or the store page, or if you go to your library and you click properties, uh, it's somewhere here, maybe here. Yeah, okay, so this is your app ID. It's not private, so you can, you can share it. I think the detail here is that this file needs to be in the folder where Godot is running from. So it's not in your project, it's in the folder where your binary is. Um, that's a little bit lame because that means that if you're developing many games, you, you need to keep switching the IDs, but I don't really think that's the case for most of people. So with this app ID, this should just work. I created a script to load as an outload called Steam Control. So the plugin already exposed a Steam single down, but you need to do some stuff to initialize it. And the, I copied this from uh, the plugin, the GD extension plugin, but it, this is also in the demos. And I'll explain a little bit what's going on here. Hey, I've done some improvements since I recorded this video. So I want to show you the updated versions that, uh, of what we had before. If you install the asset lib plugin, the core for this comes uh, as a singleton. Uh, if you're using the pre-compiled editor, uh, I think you'll have to implement this yourself. So the part that matters for the plugin is the Steam init. Uh, this is what is going to initialize your client. And also you need to set the run callbacks in the process. I'm not really sure what those two things do under the hood, uh, but yeah, they are required for the plugin to work. If you install the front asset lib, Steam init comes with false in here. So um, this will stop the initial user fetching data. And uh, because you want achievements, you will have to either manually request that afterwards or just leave it like this. From this one, you get an initial dictionary that tells you if the user is online, if the user owns the game, or if it's just a free weekend. Uh, I don't need any of those things. So the only thing I need is if the initialization succeeded. So once I initialize my client, um, I added this guard here. And this one, what this thing does, it's basically, uh, if it's standalone, it means that it's, it's the released game. So if it's the exported game and the initialization failed, I just want to quit. And uh, this is probably what you want to do. Otherwise you have these uh, missing features. Now, if I'm running via the editor, uh, quitting would be a little bit annoying because uh, sometimes I might not have things configured correctly. So in this one, uh, besides printing some useful information here, I also uh, set my achievements mode to be local. This achievements is my single time, I create this one. So um, you might not have anything like this. But yeah, I think that the main difference here is that if it's the exported game, I'm quitting. Uh, if it's the editor game, I just keep going because uh, that's not a big of a deal locally. So I think the last thing I haven't talked about is this one. This is a um, signal that comes once the user information is available. I'm connecting this one as a one shot. This means that this is going to be executed only once. And when it does, I'm just setting this flag to true. And I'm doing this because I intend to 
use this flag in my loading screen. Yeah, I guess that's all for this Newton. Uh, let's get back to the video. Now coming with my implementation. I have this achievement that's also an auto load. It's, uh, it's global. And this module exposes a few methods. There is an unlock that's supposed to be called with the enum and uh, it gets the enum name. That's basically this. And uh, it calls whatever this store is. I guess this is likely the strategy pattern. And what happens here is uh, if you saw my Steam control thing, I have this set mode, achievements mode, Steam. And what this does, it's basically, it sets a different store depending where I'm running my game. So I decided to do it this way instead of checking is Steam because uh, I don't know how each IO works or um, Epic. Let's say I deploy my game in another thing. I probably want achievements there as well. So I can have different implementations and I don't need to do some ugly ifs or maths in here. So uh, for the local store I haven't implemented yet and it looks like this, uh, unlock and this unlocked. So the one you care about is likely the Steam implementation. And there are two things here. So the first one is unlocked. So is unlocked just do get achievements. That's the one that gets whatever's in the information in Steam and it returns two pieces of information. So red, I guess it means return and it, this is to signify if it found this, the achievement or not. So if you're passing a wrong key or if you have initialized your Steam, you're gonna get red false. So the other one achieved, it's obvious if it's achievement was achieved or not. And I use those two pieces of information to decide if the achievement is unlocked or not. The second method here is the one that sets the achievement, that unlocks the achievement. So I guess the detail here is that if you call set achievement, that's all good. You're gonna call Steam and set achievement as unlocked. But from what I see, it won't show the toasty or the notification that the achievement was unlocked. Uh, only when I close the game, that thing's triggered. For that, you actually need to call store stats. So this one is gonna trigger the toasty for you. Um, and the way I use it in my code, I just added like a sample code here in one of my main uh, screens, and it just waits three seconds and then it calls unlock. I think the last detail here is the reset all stats, because as you are testing this stuff, you might want to use the same achievement because it's just easier. So uh, you can just call this one and this is gonna reset all progress in your client. And this includes also stats, the other thing I didn't talk about. So um, this is for development only, you won't use that in your game, I guess. You don't want to reset people's progress. Yeah, I'm gonna run my game now and you see this thing being triggered. So if I just execute my game, uh, well, let me close before, oh, too late. You see, I got the notification here down, but what I was going to show you is in here, uh, it's showing that I just unlocked this achievement. It's 50% because I have two. So let me reset again and execute it. So this is gonna reset my achievement. So if I show you here, do I need to refresh stuff? Maybe, yes. Okay, so it's not unlocked anymore. And uh, I think one detail here is that if you set up your app ID correctly, you'll see that your Steam is gonna show you as if you're running the game, which is pretty cool. So um, if I finish here, it's not running anymore. So I'm just gonna add achievement again and run it. So you see there's this message saying uh, Steam initialized with some information. Uh, and then a set achievement is the print I added here. And yeah, so I was talking while that happened, but it showed the toasty again. So if I go to my Steam again, this is uh, my new one. If I change that achievement, if I set two, now another one should be triggered. Set achievement, and here you can see this one doesn't have an image. And if I come here, now it's 100% unlocked. So kind of a recap of all the details. First, make sure you publish your achievements in Steam when you create them. Second, you need your app ID to be in the same folder as your editor, like as the binary for your editor. Um, third, at least on my machine, the GD expansion plugin uh, didn't work. I mean, it would crash the game when I get the achievement. Uh, if that's happening to you, there is an open issue. You can comment there just to let them know that that's also happening. Uh, but in the meantime, or as a workaround, you can use the compiled editor or you can compile the editor yourself. And I think the last one is, is structure your game in a way that you are not dependent on Steam because down the line, you might want to publish your game in different places. And yes, you can go there and remove the whole Steam code. But if you do it in a very modularized way, you won't have to do it. And even if you do it, it won't be very uh, intrusive. So that's it.